it would be nice if people could just sit there, close their eyes and, you know, just take a few deep breaths in and out and then just start to, to listen within. Like, what, where is your discomfort? And just lean into the discomfort. And that's where you can become aware of, of what you want to shift. But Can you maybe talk through, like, personally, before we kind of get into your work stuff, but how did you start to realise, you know, that your mental health wasn't where it needed to be and what strategies you needed to do to kind of change it for yourself? For sure. Um, I think I probably started to realise it um, when I was just, I had behaviours that I just didn't know why I was acting the way that I was. And to, to elaborate on that, it was, I guess, lying to people, okay. being dishonest. Um, it was things that were, were dragging me away from, from, the, from any integrity and, and from any values that I, I placed upon myself. And so when I started to do that, I started to look a little bit within, but it didn't get very far at, at that point. I wasn't, I wasn't willing to, to really shine the light on any of my issues. Um, so I, I started to become aware of them more so because they, that, yeah, they were getting pointed out um, pretty, pretty obviously towards me. But yeah, yeah I guess the, the, the changes really needed to, to start um, taking place because I was just, I was always taking you know, multiple steps back anytime I tried to, to move forward. And, and that could have been in, in any relationships. Um, it was the same cycles and it was either me being overly obsessive or having zero interest. And there was no, no balance within that, mm. um, within my, my physical health, my eating, my, my training, it was very, very inconsistent where it was an all or nothing approach. Yeah. So I started to, to really identify these, these areas, um, and, and just knew that the way that I was living wasn't sustainable. And, if I, you know, I've always placed a high value on, on wanting to be uh, a role model uh, and, to, and to be in a family as well. And I just knew that the behaviors that I was putting out, it was just, it wasn't possible to, to be able to have that if I continued in that way. So I needed to, to take ownership on that and, and start to, to make some changes. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that was important to you to be a role model? Or why did you hold yourself up to that standard, do you think? Yeah, uh, I, think, I think within I, I, have, I have leadership as a, as a quality um, that, that has just always been there within mm -hmm. me. But then, and I think that's why there was such a, a contrast in the behaviours that I was yeah. showing up as. Um, but yeah, I always, I've always been inspired by people that have, that have shown leadership qualities that have that have done done things no matter what they they feel that society deems as right or wrong that just follow follow their own beliefs and and stay true to them so i've always been inspired yeah. by that um and and i guess wanted to to lead by example myself yeah when it sounds like that is your true self and you were almost denying that and that's how you ended up <laughs> going down yeah. that path because you were denying your true self. Yeah. Yeah. There was definitely some conflicted parts within me at that yeah, point. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Mm. And that would be true of so many people though. I think it's, it's that, you know, I like you saying in the beginning, you know, you started that awareness and you know, you it would kind of, it wouldn't go deep enough and you kind of take a few steps back because I think this, this, journey to awareness it just doesn't happen overnight you don't just click and instantly oh yep cool I've realized all these things wrong with me and now I'm going to change my life it's a gradual process uh, and awareness is really hard and that's probably the first step people need to take but I'm just wondering as well so what are some of the the habits or or the activities you do now consistently to keep your mental health in a good place to keep yourself aware of where you need to go yeah yeah, so there, there is quite a few that I've, I've learned along the way and, and very, very important, I guess, for, for people to, to identify what does work for them because not everything will work for everyone. Mm -hmm. But for me, along the journey, I, I learned mindfulness practices. At the start, it wasn't a consistent practice and 
probably didn't have the understanding of what mindfulness and then even meditation was, but my practices have got um, more consistent and, and it's, it's just a practice. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing it well or not to begin with, but so that, that's a pretty important practice for me. Uh, breathing for me is a, a massive practice. And one that I found was a, a really simple way to, to cultivate mindfulness. It was a way that, it didn't need to have all the, if, you, if you're not into it and haven't learned it, it didn't need all of the the, the words and, and understanding of what it was. You just mm. close your eyes and just breathe consciously for five yeah. minutes. And that makes such a you huge know. difference, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like this yeah. really yeah. underestimated how much of a difference that makes. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's yeah. such a simple tool to, yeah. to shift states. And I didn't understand any of that, but... Yeah, once I started practicing, I learned from um, learned from Wim Hof, and nice. I loved that deeper style of practice because I could feel the shift within. And I think that was a, a really cool thing about any form of breath work, and and what I learned and then practiced, which was just simple, just slower the exhale down, and it calms you down. Like yeah. just the, those little shifts are so simple to be able to create. So breath work has been extremely important for me to to use as a tool to stimulate my recovery to use as a an anytime practice whether it's jumping on before this show um i literally did a minute worth just to cultivate some energy so yeah. you know there, there's so many different ways that you can use it but yeah i love breath work as a tool and then probably one of my Personal favorites would be jumping in the cold exposure. So I've got a deep chest freezer that's zero degrees. I cannot imagine doing that. I cannot. <laughs> yeah. Get you in there, Amanda. One day. No, <laughs> you <Yeah>. won't. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I have heard really great things about that. Yeah. It's for me, it's a there's a, there's a number of benefits to it, but to put it very simply, you're looking at a if you're looking at very cold water on a cold day, which is even better. And you're looking at it thinking, hmm, <laughs> like that doesn't it's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the beauty in it is that you yeah. look at it, know that it's going to be hard, but then there's been times where I will actually just say to my mind, to, and I'll tell that to F off, I'll tell yeah. my body to F off, I am in control yeah. and I hop in. And it, it really, uh, I, I say that because when I hop in, I purely just focus on the breath and just slowing down the exhale. Once I've gained that control, um, I sit in there for maybe two, three, sometimes maybe four minutes, hop out, and then I feel like I can achieve anything in that yeah, day. Yeah. I've just yeah. over, overcome my, my barriers of my mind telling me that I shouldn't do something and I've just done it. Yeah. Mm. No, I yeah. love the idea, but I can tell you right now, I am not ever doing that. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> you've set your boundaries nice and strong i like it <laughs> yeah, right. i know that boundary is there yes 